Good afternoon or good morning, as your time zone might have it. Uh, my name is Luc van Dijk. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO of The Dalian, um, a Swiss-based company dedicated to machine learning and avionics. I want to extend my heartfelt thanks to the organizers for giving me this opportunity. And I would like to talk to you today about uh, machine learning applied to safety critical avionics and the uh, aspects of their certification. Next slide, please. So we started our company around the belief, founded on the belief that if you want to fly in today's airspace, just like driving in today's traffic, means you deal with the kind of problems that are currently being dealt with by humans. Uh, and that means you have to make the kind of judgment calls and solve the kind of problems that are currently solved by people with eyes and a visual cortex. And to solve these kind of problems, you need to apply uh, so-called machine learning algorithms. It's what we currently call artificial intelligence. Uh, and some of these problems are only fairly recently have become feasible to be solved by computers at all. Uh, now to apply these in the aerospace domain, uh, it requires proof that these algorithms are safe and fit for purpose, like we require from all parts of an aircraft, uh, structural propulsion, um, hardware and software. Uh, we don't let just anybody put anything in the air because flying has to be safe. So that means that these uh, modern machine learning algorithms have to meet functional and safety requirements because that's how we professionally deal um, with this safety aspect in aerospace. And that means that uh, we first have to build up the evidence that these algorithms are safe so that we can get them certified. It's, it's, uh, I empathically want to stress it's not the other way around. You should not treat certification as this hurdle that you have to pass before you're allowed to go uh, play in the wild. Uh, we have to require proof that the artificial intelligence that we want to apply is safe and we can, as an industry, not afford shortcuts. So we have to take the bull by the horns. If I can have the next slide. So at the Dalian, what we started out uh, as the uh, first set of problems we wanted to tackle in this way uh, is the capabilities of the VFR pilot. Humans typically learn to fly in VFR. VFR gives you a lot of freedom um, to fly around without uh, being dependent on ATC and other kinds of other constraints. And it's an ideal playground, if you will, to demonstrate that uh, it is possible to solve these problems with machines. So we have developed systems um, to a market readiness level um, around uh, location. Um, we can position ourselves uh, independent of a GPS uh, purely on camera-based uh, input in visual conditions. We have uh, the important answer, where is everybody else flying? So that we don't fly into them, the detect and avoid, which also uh, you are required by law to use your eyes for if there are visual conditions um, and which humans routinely do, although they have, I mean, it's a hard problem even for uh, humans with very good eyes. And the final one, arguably the most important one is where can I safely land? So how can I uh, guide my aircraft to um, a runway uh, in the absence of an ILS system, uh, the way humans routinely do uh, every day in the thousands of airports worldwide that do not even have an ILS system. So we have built a, a product that can use nothing but cameras to perform these three functions. And now uh, the next step is, or actually not the next step, simultaneously, if I can have the next slide, uh, the problem arises, uh, to get them certified. And when we started the company back in 2016, uh, the state of the discussion industry was in the, in the, in the, of the discussion in the industry was very much one of, you know, this is fundamentally impossible because nobody knows how this artificial intelligence works. You know, it's uh, dangerous, non-deterministic stuff. Uh, maybe we can get an exception or maybe we can build some fence around it. So we felt that from the beginning, it was important not just to build the systems to a functioning level, but also help develop the theory and the practice of uh, how to think about their safety and how to prove their safety or disprove their safety in the case they're not safe. So we did two projects together with the uh, European uh, Aerospace Safety Agency. Um, uh, the title of the reports that came out was Concept of Design Assurance for Neural Networks. And a couple of weeks ago, we published the second part of that uh, where we, um, in these uh, reports, we developed uh, the concept of uh, learning assurance for neural networks. And in the second report, we also looked at uh, aspects of explainability and uh, runtime assurance and other forms of uh, safety mitigation. 
And uh, EASA, as a, an equal partner in this project, uh, already used some of the work uh, in a report. Uh, they, if I can have the next slide. So uh, EASA already used this when they published their uh, first guidance uh, for machine learning applications in avionics. Um, so I obviously do not speak on behalf of EASA, but what I wanted to talk to you today is a bit about the uh, material we developed in our two joint projects and how that fits in the uh, EASA roadmap and their recently published first usable guidance. So um, uh, this fits in a roadmap that EASA published uh, in January of last year where they um, put out a timeline to put out uh, guidelines for the first applications. And uh, I think this is actually a slightly outdated table of the definitions. Um, what EASA realized and put forth is that the level one to five that are used in automotive don't make a whole lot of sense in aerospace. So they uh, defined level one, two, and three, uh, specifically in the context of flying. And um, uh, the first guidance is for the simplest type of systems where you are a pilot assistant. Um, so you help the pilot do uh, his or her job better. Um, first, maybe just acquiring uh, information and in a second step, level 1B, maybe even uh, helping to parse that information, but definitely not in the control loop. That's reserved for the future levels. And uh, for us, the important uh, point is that this is the, you know, if we pass the first hurdle of making it uh, uh, certifiable at all, these, these new modern techniques, then we can up the level of safety. Uh, but we first have to take this first hump uh, of um, uh, uh, getting, getting past this point where it is certifiable at all. So if you can have the next slide. Um, in their uh, in this first report, um, they uh, are actually already in the publication from last year. They broke down the uh, European Union uh, ethical guidelines for uh, applying AI in modern society uh, to a framework of trustworthiness analysis that's more uh, you know streamlined and focused on the cut to the problem space of uh, flying. Um, within those uh, this trustworthiness. Uh, there are three building blocks, uh, so-called learning assurance, the explainability and the safety risk mitigation, which play a fundamental role in these uh, first guidelines that they uh, put forth. And I'm going to walk through them in reverse order. Um, the learning assurance is the bit we helped develop. Uh, the explainability and the safety risk mitigation actually predate uh, the assurance. And uh, I hope it will become uh, clear why I want to work th walk through them in uh, in reverter so if i can have the next slide the the third pillar actually of the uh, proposed um, guidelines is the so-called safety risk mitigation uh, EASA speaks about uh, two uh, concrete uh, ways to do this one is the runtime assurance and the other one is licensing I do not have the time to talk about licensing now, but the runtime assurance is the uh, is an already older idea. Uh, for example, made explicit in uh, this ASTM standard F three two six nine that if you have a thing that you don't know exactly how to prove it's safe um, because it's you know too complex, then maybe you can have a monitor that switches it off and have some other system take over. And this is of course you know if you can do this, this is always. A uh, wonderful way to put in an extra safety barrier. At the same time, it is questionable if the function that you're performing is complex enough that it is at all even possible to recognize this unsafety state, uh, because recognizing it might actually be, you know, uh, something for which you need uh, uh, AI or a neural network or a machine learning system, and that you can always recovery uh, do recovery control with a simpler system is also not a given. It's a you know, if you can apply a brake and come to a standstill, that's nice. But you're, if you're in the process of landing, it's not entirely clear how you can have that done by a simpler system. Um, nevertheless, uh, EASA, you know, invites uh, people to use this, especially if some of the aspects of uh, the design insurance for the neural network and the explainability, which I'll talk about later, uh, are not manageable. This is definitely... Um, uh, you know, composing systems into a larger architecture to make them safer is obviously a good idea, uh, provided the resulting system is actually 
um, safer and you can provide bonds on that. Um, one of the things we add to this in the proposal is that the safety monitor is itself a complex system that helps recognizing dangerous situations. Um, if I can go to the next step, next slide. The second building block uh, is the one of explainability. And uh, this is also a concept that was already uh, prevalent in the discussion when we started the company back in 2016. And the problem with explainability is that as long as you don't define exactly what constitutes a valid explanation or not, uh, you are you're talking on, uh, you're building a, a theory on clay feet. Um, so EASA had the uh, original contribution to our project to say, okay, if it's in the eye of the beholder, how about we define two types of beholders, because that's what we do. One of them is the designer and regulator, you know, who should understand what's going on in this machine learning system. And the second one is the crew. If we're talking about machi uh, machine learning for the assistance of pilots, there's a well-established uh, set of uh, guidelines uh, called 25. 20 5.1302, which says that basically you should not surprise the crew. So um, to explain to the designer and the regulator uh, how the system works uh, at the system level is actually the very topic of the last pillar uh, or the first pillar in the, uh, in the guidelines, if I can have the next slide. It's the, it's the next slide. Right. It's the concept of learning assurance that we developed in these two uh, projects together with them. Um, the original idea was that uh, we, we investigated how much of the existing processes around design assurance of avionics uh, had to be changed and what could stay in place. And it turns out that almost everything of your ARP and DO178C processes apply unchanged, except for the bit where you have to assure, that is, provide certainty on the emerging properties that, that, that come out of, the, of your neural network. And then it turns out that instead of having, um, looking very precisely on lines of codes that are being written, uh, you have to learn, look at your learning uh, algorithms and more importantly, the data that is used to uh, perform these data learning, uh, the machine learning algorithms. And that's logical because in a machine learning system, instead of having uh, well-paid um, uh, humans uh, locked up in a dark room with chocolate and coffee, uh, writing lines of code, we now have another computer program exploring the design space uh, based on da data sets. And to guarantee that these things work as advertised, you have to uh, be careful of how you treat your data. So what we work through in great detail in both reports is the steps you have to follow so that you can be sure that the uh, performance you measure in the lab uh, will hold when you go out into the field and confront reality. Um, I, I cannot do this whole process justice uh, in the few minutes that I have here, but the uh, essence is that um, to be able to draw this conclusion, you have to independently sample your data that you use for validation in the lab from the data that you encounter uh, in the wild. And then you have to make sure that the data you, tra you trained, for example, in the cloud on big data, big machine learning data centers is actually um, uh, unchanged when you deploy it on your mean and lean uh, embedded computers that, that fly uh, and that perform these functions in flight. So um, both reports amount to about 300 pages. Um, we kept some of this as trade secret to ourselves, but in the, in the interest of advancing the state of the discussion in the industry and to show to people that this is possible, there's no need to put the monster in a box and walk around it. And there's also no need to look for magic explainability other than understanding how the machine learning process works. Uh, we, um, uh, together with EASA, published uh, the bulk of this report for the uh, benefit of uh, humanity. And if there are any questions about it, I look forward to receiving them. Last slide. Thank you.